Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, we'll be learning how to make this beautiful Ankara sweatband. If this is what you like to learn, please kindly stay tuned. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and please give this video a thumbs up. Alright, so I've gone ahead to mark my starting point line, my side line, the border line. I left 3 inches above and 3 inches at the side. I've gone ahead to measure from my waist to hip. This is my waistline. My waist to hip, my waist to crotch, my waist to knee, and my waist to trouser length. The end of the paper is going to be my trouser length. The reason why is because my joggers is not going to be getting to my ankle area because there will be a band coming in around the ankle area. So I've gone ahead to deduct my did that my whole trouser length measurement. I deducted the band for my whole trouser length measurement. So that's why I have um, my length to be this short. So I'll go ahead now and place all my measurements. So the first thing I'll be doing is to divide my hip by four to create my upper block. And my hip divided by four is 9.5. Now, if you choose to, um, if you want to make your joggers a little bit free, you can add ease to that your hip measurement. That means if you divide your hip measurement by four, you can decide to add half an inch to your hip measurement. But I don't want um, that ease, so I'll go ahead to just make it of my hip divided by four measurements. So I'll go ahead now to work on my crotch extension. And for the front, I'll be doing, um, that's the hip divided by 20 to get my crotch extension from the front. And that's 1.85. Uh, I'm measuring the 1.85 from this level here. So from this point, I will extend my, I will extend my line out. So the next thing I want to do now is just to connect with the curve from this point to this point here. Making sure you don't have more than, at this angle like this, you don't have more than one inches. I always emphasize on that. So the next thing I want to do now is to create my lower block. I will take this line, what I have, the figure I have from here to here, I'll take it down. So what I have from here to here, I have 11.75, so I'll take it down. So I'll be measuring 11.75 at various points so that I can have a straight line. All right, so the next thing I want to do is to locate the midpoint. Is to locate the midpoint of this line. The line I call the crease line. So 11.75 divided by 2. I'll be dividing it by 2. And this is my midpoint. That's a total of 5.75. 5.75. I'll mark it down also. Right, so the next thing I want to do now. Now for my joggers, I don't need a dart. So I'll just go ahead. And when you are creating now, when, when I'll be shaping, I want my waist uh, measurement to be irrelevant because I, I that upper part to be having elastic. It's, it's becoming with an elastic band. So in that case, I don't need my waist measurement. What I'll be taking to the waist measurement is my hip circumference. So on the waist area here, on the waist area, I will leave the figure of the hip circumference divided by four on that waist because I don't need to shape because I want that part to be free. Because your jogger is not going to be coming with a zipper. So you need something that can go freely around your hip. So elastic will work perfectly fine. So at the same time, I, like I said, there won't be anything called that. So I'll go ahead now to shape my um, round knee measurement. And my round knee measurement divided by four is four. Is four. My round knee divided by four is four inches on both sides. So I'll go ahead and add a little bit ease to my round. Because I want it to be a little bit free around that part. So I'll go ahead and add um, 0.5 to my rounding measurement on both sides. That after dividing by four, I'll be adding 0.5. And on my on my knee, rather my round ankle area, I will also divide by four and then add ease to that's 0.5. So I'll go ahead and connect all lines together. And if you want your joggers fitted, you can use your exact body measurements. So I'll use my cuff to connect from here. 
remember i always say if you're working with a client who's um um thigh is fat you don't need to use a curve just go straight with the ruler so that the person don't complain that that part is a size all right so this is my I don't even need to do any adjustment. So this is my, this is all I need. That's my pattern for the joggers for the front. So I'll go ahead to draft out the back from this front. So from this point, I'll go in, that on this line here, I'll go in by one inch. And on the waistline, from my center front, this is my center front. I'll go in by two inches from my center front. And I'll connect my one inches on the crotch level line to the two inches on the waist, like this. And on that point, I'll come up by one and a half inches. If you have a client whose bomb is very big at the back, you can use 2 inches or 2.5. So I'll connect from here. That's from this point now, I'll connect to my waistline measurements. That I'll take the same measurement I have on my waistline. That's my hip divided by 5 placed on this point. I'll measure it. That's 9.5. I'll come and place it at my back measurement too. 9.5. So I'll remeasure my hip. This is my center back now. I'll remeasure my hip for my center back. That is 9.5. 9.5. I'm measuring it on the crotch level line and on the waist to hip line. So I'll connect everything together. And then I'll just add half an inch to my round knee and round ankle. I'll add half an inch. And then I'll connect with the straight ruler. Very simple. my hip by four and then i'll place the measurement that's my hip divided my sorry my hip divided by 10 and i'll place the measurement and i'll extend so i started from my center back line to measure for my hip divided by 10 and the figure i placed so i'll connect from my here to touch this line it doesn't necessarily have to get to this point so i'll use my curve now to connect from here to the half inches at the round knee point So that's everything about the drafting of the joggers. So don't forget, my joggers, there are some joggers, you see they have zipper fly, but the zipper fly and the shoes, they are covered. So in that case, I'll just go ahead to measure, I'll extend this my waist to hip line out by one and a half inches to create that room for zipper fly. And I'll connect it to the waist. And I'll use my cuff to connect from here. So I'll be using this to create my shield and my zipper fly. All right, so I'll go ahead now to trace out my front because my front um, joggers will be coming with a side pocket. So I'll go ahead to trace my front from this pattern. So I'm going ahead to cut out my pattern and trace out the front from my previous pattern. This is the front, this is the back. And I'm going to ahead to trace out my shield and I'll be cutting out my zipper fly now. I'll be cutting out my zipper fly from the front, the curvy part of it. So now, because I'll be having an additional band coming at the top because I want my joggers to be high waist. So additional um, two inches um, band will be coming at the top of my trouser. So now I'll go ahead now to cut on fabric. I'll cut everything on fabric. But before then, I would draft out the pockets that I need for my joggers. So at this point, I'll come in by two and a half inches and then i'll go down by seven inches and then i'll use a straight line to connect from this point to my seven inches so i'll go in uh, from my this is my pocket opening pocket opening so for my pocket opening i'll go in by three inches for my pocket bars and then i'll come down from my seven inches by three inches and i'll extend that line down to connect to that three inches and so I'll go ahead now to trace out my pocket bag and my pocket opening. So I've gone ahead now to add, to cut out my trouser pattern. This is my front, this is my back. So at the inseam, that's the 
I'm um, saying that from the added half an inch, half an inch at the upper part, at the pocket area, added half an inch. At the side, I added one inch and at the down, I added half an inch to join to my band because there's also a band coming in at that lower part. So I added half an inch to attach to the band at the lower part. So for my, this is my pocket, um, um, pocket facing and pocket bag. This is my shield and zipper fly. Don't forget to cut out your pocket opening. So whatever allowance you use at the side of your trouser, that's what you use at the side of your pocket um, facing and pocket bag because they are part of your front trouser. So let's get right into the sewing process. So here yeah, I'll be attaching my zipper fly and shield to the crotch area. So the first thing I'll be doing first is to attach my shield to the left side of my front trouser. After attaching my shield to the left side of my trouser, I'll pick the right side of my trouser and attach my zipper fly to it. I'll be using the straight part of the zipper fly to, using my half inches allowance I left. So I'm done attaching the zipper fly. I'll go ahead now to top stitch on my zipper fly. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to close up the remaining part of my crotch using my half inches allowance. When I'm done, I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see this is what it looks like. So the next now do is to close them together. I'll just close them together like that. Yes, like that. I'll close them together and then stitch on it, drawing out the shape of the zipper fly. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to attach my pocket facing. I'll be using half an inch to attach my pocket facing to the pocket opening. So once I'm done attaching the pocket facing to the pocket opening, I'll go ahead now to top stitch on the pockets facing so that that part will be firm. So I'll go ahead now to attach my pocket bag to the pocket facing. I'll go ahead now to attach my pocket bag to the pocket facing using half an inch. So once I'm done, I'll go ahead now to secure the edge of the pocket to the trouser itself. And I also secure the upper part to I'll attach the boots, the pocket and the trouser itself together. So I'm done with the front. I'll go ahead now to pick the back and secure the crotch area of the back using my half inches allowance. So I'm done with the back. I'll go ahead now to secure the front and the back together using my 0 0.75 inches allowance I left at the side. So now I'm going ahead to stitch the inseam using my half an inch allowance I left. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to measure my total waist, everything I have on my waist, which I have 39 inches. So I'll go ahead now to cut 39 inches long of my, that my band is going to be 39 inches long and 3 inches wide. The reason why is because the elastic I'm using is about 1.75 inches or about 2 inches, yes, they're about at the end of the day, when I finish measure, I discover it's about 1.75 inches. So I'm making use of the remaining inches to attach to my trousers. I hope you get that. 
So the next thing I'll be doing now is to open up the bun and then bring the two edges together like that and then use my half inches allowance I added to seal it up. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to fold my band to the way I want it to be, just like that. And then I'll be marking out, I, I don't know if you've noticed, some joggers, they used to have like a ring at that middle where the rope passes, um, where the rope passes into and then comes out. So that's the um, part I'm marking right, right now. From that, my middle line, I've marked half an inch to the right and to the left. So the next thing I'm doing now is to punch into those holes so that I can insert my eyelet ring. So I've gone ahead to insert it using my groommate mansion and this is what it looks like so beautiful so the next thing i'll be doing now is to measure how long i want my elastic to be and i went ahead to deduct 10 inches for my hip measurement and i'll be closing up the two edge i'll bring the two edge to meet each other like that you can see like that and then i would attach it in between my ankara band So I'll try to put it inside the Ankara very well. And then I'll be stitching not on the elastic this time around. I'll be stitching just on the Ankara, that's the two Ankara, excluding the elastic. Because at this point, if you stitch on the elastic together with the Ankara, your um, elastic will not draw the way it ought to. So you don't want to stitch on your elastic together with the Ankara at this point. You are only stitching on your Ankara, bringing the two edge of your Ankara to meet each other while using the other hand to push in the elastic band. Please take note of that. So I'll go ahead now and sew it all up. Even if, um, because you know, the elastic is quite shorter than the Ankara, so I'll try as much as possible to draw my elastic to fit into my Ankara band. So I'm done with it and this is what it looks like. So beautiful, right? So now the next thing I will do now is to mark out the midpoint of my front shoulder. I'll look for the center point and I will notch with my scissors. And the next thing I will do now is to, you know that line we joined initially that we brought the two edges here, that line. I'll go ahead now to place it at the midpoint and then I'll start sewing from that midpoint round, all round into my Ankara waist trouser. And um, this time around, you can stitch on your, you can sew on your elastic if you want to. The first time I said we should not sew on the elastic, we should only bring the two Ankara to secure the elastic inside. But this time around, when you're sewing your band, that's your band now, to your trouser, you can stitch on the elastic. So I'm done now, and this is what it looks like. So beautiful, right? Very beautiful. All right, so the next thing I'll be doing now is to go ahead and top stitch on my band. I'll go ahead now to stop stitch on my band. Actually, I'll be top stitching um, two times on that band. So this is the first stop stitch. It's coming above my eyelet, that's above the eyelet ring. So when you're top stitching, you need to drag your elastic. Yes, drag it the way I'm dragging it till you get to the very end. So now I'm done with the first top stitch. Go ahead, top stitch the second time that will be coming under the ring. So the ring will be in between the first top stitch and the second top stitch. So I'll go ahead and top stitch like that, also dragging it to the very end. So yeah, I'm done top stitching on my elastic band, and this is what. It looks like. Next, now I'll be doing is also to repeat the same process 
for the angle. Go ahead and measure what you have around that part and then cut out, deduct your, um, cut out your ankle measurement by some inches. Then you cut out and then you repeat same process like we did for the waist area. Repeat same process for your ankle area. So I'm done attaching the ankle band to the trouser and this is what it looks like. Thank you for watching to the very end. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and please give this video a thumbs up. Also, please don't not forget to share. Thank you so much. See you in our next video. I love you.